So, what, what I want to end on now is not just cancer, but something that we're doing to our children through pesticides that is unforgivable. The research shows that a whole range of pesticides damages the normal development of nerve cells, the nervous system in children. So I showed you the pictures of how glyphosate does that. Many of the chemicals, many of the pesticides were developed originally not as pesticides, but as nerve poisons in warfare, such as the organophosphates. And we know that whole groups of them, organophosphates, carbamates, pyrethroids, and neonicotinoids, all damage the nervous system. And the brain is our largest collection of nerve cells. What the science shows is that the smallest amount of these chemicals cause um, negative effects on the development of the brain, and particularly in children. This is an example of a study done in Mexico with two groups of children. One group of children lived in a farming area in a valley where they were subject to pesticide drift. The other group lived higher in the mountains, they actually lived in traditional villages and didn't use pesticides. These are four-year-old girls, four-and-a-half-year-old girls, and they're asked to draw pictures of people. And if you look at one lot of pictures, you can see they're drawing sort of pictures that all of us as parents or grandparents just love, little children drawing, and you've probably still got, got these pictures around our houses. You know, that's ex what we'd expect them to draw. But look at the other girls, they're the same age. They can't draw anything remotely like a person. That's brain damage. When, when that was put out, the... Pesticide people said, oh, you know, that's, that's anecdotal. That's not real science. How do you know it's pesticides? It could be this, that, that. Make up all the excuses to ignore it. But since then, there are lots of other studies that look at what happens when the fetus is exposed to the smallest amounts of pesticides. In this case, it is not because they live in a farming community, but it's the residues in the food that mum ate when she was pregnant. And these residues cross the placental barrier and affect the development of, child of children. And the results show that this causes a lowering of the IQ of children. One study actually tried to find the smallest safe level and couldn't. In other words, the smallest amounts cause damage and we have no evidence of safety for any amount. And I want to say this again, and I say it at every place I speak. At this stage, there is not one peer-reviewed scientific paper showing the safety of one pesticide for children. Not one. There's no evidence. And I'm waiting for the day I'm proved wrong, because that would be good news. At least we know one pesticide at a certain level is safe. But at this stage, there's no evidence that any of them are safe. And the evidence shows that the smallest amounts cause damage. And what I want to get across here is most people are not farmers. They get their pesticides from the food they eat. And these levels and residues of pesticides are the ones which our regulatory authorities, like the FDA, like the US EPA, say is safe. 
We now have very good scientific techniques of actually analysing the damage done by pesticides. In the past, you know, they, they would feed the animals, destroy them, and then, then look at their body parts under a microscope. We don't need to do that now because we have non-invasive technologies like MRI scans. You know, the excuse for, for not looking at where, where the pesticides say, pesticides um, could affect children is the fact that, it, you know, as much as it was actually proposed by some people in pesticide companies, it is unethical to feed children, kill them, and then start looking at their bodies under microscopes, thankfully. But then they'd say, oh, well, we can't do that, so we, um, we, 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 we've got no evidence, you know, we can't get any evidence, so um, everything's okay. It's the ostrich with their head in the sand, you know. If you don't see any danger, there is no danger. But we do have technologies where we can look inside the human body or any body, not harm them, and see the damage. And I want to show you this. this. These are MRI scans of the brains of children who were affected by pesticides when their mother was pregnant with them. Their mom ate the normal American diet. Now what, we want, what I want to show you here is that the greater the pesticide exposure the greater the brain damage. What you can see there is actual brain damage. So it's just not testing for IQ or anything like that. We now have solid evidence that small amounts of pesticides in food is damaging the brains of our children before they are born. We also know why they're developing as children young children being breastfed. We know pesticides cross and, uh, you know, breast milk here in the US, when it's tested, they find Roundup in it, glyphosate and other pesticides. We know that the poisons that are in GMO corn, for instance, and soy, they actually modify them so they make their own poisons and these cross the placenta and cause damage. We have this science now. It's open science. It's in the peer-reviewed literature. If someone like me, I'm a farmer. I can get those papers. I can read them and I can understand them. How come the people who are in charge of pesticide safety can't read and understand? I, I would call this child neglect and abuse of the worst sort. And the other thing I want to say is, is this. We're at a, a conference here on health and food. People say to me all the time, oh, organic food is so expensive. How expensive is this? What is the cost of this? What is the cost, the lifetime cost, of doing damage to children? That, you know, there is no price worth paying for this. It's unforgivable. And we need to get that across. 